I'm Gina Rushton. I'm a journalist at BuzzFeed News where I cover issues that affect Australian women. I'm chairing a session called Abusive Cultures, which is a discussion between Sanam Meher, who is a journalist based in Pakistan, who's written a book about Kandil Baloch, who was a social media star who was murdered by her brother, and Jess Hill, who is an Australian author and journalist who's written a book about um, gendered violence in Australia. And I think that right now, um, gendered violence is at the forefront of everyone's minds in Australia after Hannah Clark's death. And I think speaking with two journalists who are really like um, exemplifying what best practice reporting is in this area is like a, it's a really kind of um, important time to have that discussion. So I chose a talk by playwright, actor and writer Nakia Louie, which is um, a talk in which she's grappling with the question of whether there's a fourth wave of feminism. Our political identity is not about having as much as those who have the most. It's about disrupting and dismantling power. I love this talk because apart from the fact that Nakia is a really engaging and clever speaker, she's grappling with this question of whether um, there is a fourth wave of feminism and what that looks like and the question of who feminism histor has historically left behind and I guess where it, where it's going and who it can still include. Her feminism isn't about like I guess wanting a seat at the table but sort of dismantling the table and I guess building a bigger one that seats more people and I really connected to that. I get a lot of pitches from corporate from corporations and brands and networking events and like empowering active wear and stuff and especially around this time of year and I kind of um, I'm always interested in that question of who is this for, like which women, who, which women is this serving um, and who is it kind of leaving out. She says in the talk that there's strength in our chaos and I think that's kind of like um, one of the most amazing things about for, fourth wave feminism. I think the, the idea that there's strength in our chaos and that um, our differences and even conflicts kind of make a stronger movement, I think that's really powerful. Uh, so my name is Nikia Louie, it's Nikia Nelliwiyama Hope Louie. Uh, Nikia Nelliwiyama means grand special one who is grandmother's daughter. Hope is after Hope Brady from uh, Days of Our Lives. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a Gamora and Torres Strait Islander woman. I am a black woman. I am a queer woman. I am a colonised woman. I am a decolonising woman. I am a feminist woman. But whilst I find power in my diasporas, in these constructions of identity and a place in a post-colonial world, I'm going to give you a confession about what's most important about me. And this may sh shock you, a bit nervous. Um, I'm not a rich, white, cis, hetero man. <laughs> and I don't want to be. And I don't want to have what they have. Uh, I, I, don't, I don't want to be a part of what they've created. I want to be part of creating a world that dismantles the values that this patriarchy has defined. I don't know if it's the fourth wave of feminism. I'm not that clever, but... And I don't know what the fourth wave of feminism is. I think the strength is in our chaos and, and that our, our differences unite us. But I will put up to me the picture of a woman who epitomises the, the new wave of feminism that we live in. And that's my mother. <laughs> She's probably really angry at me. She's sitting over there. <laughs> my mum has only recently identified as a feminist in the last couple of years. It wasn't that she wasn't ever a feminist. It was just something, I guess, she felt that she wasn't able to identify as, but can now, and I wonder what has changed. Um, my mum grew up in a tent on the outskirts of town because my grandfather got given dog tags to say he was an honorary white man. They couldn't live on the mission. My mum got told to leave school in year 10 because it wasn't the done thing for Aboriginal people to, to go on to year 11 and 12. She still managed to get a tertiary education. Uh, she was a healthcare worker and nurse. She worked with Aboriginal women. This picture, she's pregnant with me. And a few months after I'm born, she's about to leave a domestic violence relationship for me. And from then on, she's devoted her life to the Aboriginal, to Aboriginal women in the community to look at long-term strategies and community development on how do you empower those that are most vulnerable. She's only just 
called herself a feminist, but to me, I, that's what feminism is. We all know all inequalities are connected and privilege is thinking something isn't an issue because it's not an issue to you, that's why we're all in this room. It's also cultural colonization is not just the dictation of values and what marginalizes us, it's the dictation of what we look at as success. We can only dismantle archaic value systems and power structures through changing conversations. We need to create equality, not replicate its privilege. When we talk about women, we need to question what women we are referring to. We aren't referring to all women, we're referring to white women, because that's the closest to the status quo. Silence empowers the oppressor. We can't let privilege uh, be invisible to the people who have it. To have the privilege of just being a woman means that your gender equality is biased to race. What we all need to understand and be ready to realise is that our political identity is not about having as much as those who have the most. It's about disrupting and dismantling power. Our feminism isn't limited to the rights of women. The same supremacy that devalues women is the same supremacy that devalues so many lives around this world. Just from my perspective as an Aboriginal woman, yes, we have many more female politicians in power, but my grandmother was forced into Aboriginal housing in Western Sydney where she eventually fell through a floor and died because they wouldn't fix it, the Housing Commission, and that was less than 10 years ago. Yes, how amazing it is that there are these white feminist academics that I idolise and I get to meet now, but my mother grew up in a tent by the river. Um, and how great was it to have women's lib, but during the 60s and 70s, Aboriginal, Aboriginal women were forcibly, still forcibly being sterilised. Yes, how amazing it is to have the blog advanced style, I just love it, I want to give it a shout out. <laughs> but my grandmother wore terry cloth robes and obsessed about cleaning the house every morning. Um, that's my memories of her cleaning the house, because she was still afraid that even her grandchildren would be taken. How great is it that me and my best friend Miranda Tapps will get to be in, in vogue, but unfortunately we're still the exception of the rule. Aboriginal women are still a conservative estimate, 45 times more likely to be victims of domestic violence. Um, last year an Aboriginal woman was mauled to death by dogs and that didn't even make the news. Aboriginal women have a higher rate of uterine cancer, diabetes and our life expectancy is still 20 years less than the rest of Australia. I've lost, three, I've lost three family members to domestic violence and two to suicide in the last three years. They were all women. I'm one of the lucky ones. Now, the reason I say this is not to make you feel bad. I say this because we can use our solidarity to create something new. As individuals and communities, we have a multitude of histories, but with that comes the potential for solidarity because our differences can be our similarities. Different oppressions are experienced simultaneously. Race and gender and sexual oppression can be experienced at the same time because these aren't political issues. We need to stop looking at this as a political thing. The construction of that experience and that identity is political, but what we live is human. These are human issues. There is no true success, no true victories if they don't include all women, if they don't include our most vulnerable. Feminism is values, the same as any other construct in life, but values aren't people. If we forget about people, about all people, our victories will turn into our vices in a heartbeat. Our feminism isn't just about the equality or empowerment of women. Our feminism should be about how we change and define a new type of equality and empower the, com the people and the community around us. I don't know if there's a fourth wave of feminism. I don't know if I want to call it a fourth wave of feminism because even though I have so much respect to all the feminists who went before me and all the women who have allowed opportunity, black or white or whatever, it, I still feel left out watching those presentations and during the speeches on the screen. So maybe it's feminist futurism, maybe it's female resistance, I don't know but I find it exciting because there is so much possibility to be had if change includes everyone. And I can speak to this from a true experience because it's my mother, it's my cousins, it's my aunties, it's black women who were never included in the previous waves of feminism who have made me able to stand in front of you today and talk about my experience and have visibility. I'm a success and I'm a success because of them. So if we can find equality through feminism, it's these women we need to listen to. Thank you.
Thank you.